the biggest piece of advice I got for my pace bowling was from your run up up until the takeoff point you're a athlete so you're looking at your sprint technique and making sure you're as efficient as possible. How do you see the game at the moment? When I go back to me playing at 12 years old I didn't even know there was an England women's team and now there are I think around 55 fully paid professional cricketers in the UK, females. When you were awarded that full-time professional contract, one of 41 women, how did that make you feel? I mean, I was absolutely over the moon. The Cricket Life Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Phoebe Graham. Phoebe, how's things going? I'm very well, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Season's around the corner. Looking forward to it? Yeah, it can't fun. wait. Yeah, so April we start, but we're in training at the moment three times a week, which is great. Exciting time. So let's take it all the way back with yourself. So you're born in Yorkshire. Tell us your earliest memories of the sport, how you fell in love with it, and yeah, your earliest memories, how you got into it. So my dad played minor county cricket, so we were just brought up on the side of a cricket pitch. I'm one of three girls and always just mimicked dad's action and played in the nets alongside him. Um, but it wasn't until I was about 12 years old that someone rang up my dad and basically said they need girls to play at the interval of a test match. So we ran on at Scarborough in little green t-shirts and red hats and played at the, in the interval. And because we watched it for so many years, all three of us took to it like a duck out of water. Um, so from then I start, I joined a boys team and played under 13 boys cricket and got involved at Yorkshire County Age Group and then that was almost the start of my real journey into the cricket world. Were you always a fast bowler? Yeah, always a fast bowler and then always like to hit the ball as hard as I can. So yeah, I've played so many different sports and just I think like to do everything at full pace. <laughs> Yeah, if, is, for, if any kid is perhaps watching this, is that something that you would advise trying different sports, honing those hand-eye coordinations, stuff you can adapt in different fields and adapt it into the cricket world as well? Definitely. I think you can learn so much from different sports in terms of the skills and also interacting with your teammates. So I think getting the most enjoyment from your sport is the most important thing. And if that's playing multiple sports, then most definitely do that. Leah, yeah, you mentioned um, as a youngster, you came through the Yorkshire system playing in boys teams as well. Did you find the environment welcoming? I did actually. I think because I was able to hold my own in those environments, all my teammates just saw me as a teammate versus a girl in the boys team. It was when I came across competition that they always were quite shocked and maybe made a few comments but what was really great was the boys around me were my my pals and would stick up for me so I found it challenging from different perspectives but I really enjoyed the competition and having everyone on my side really in that front. How do you see the game at the moment for youngsters young girls coming into the game do you think perceptions have changed as well how do you view things? I think that there's so many opportunities for youngsters, young girls and young boys in the game at the moment. I think when I go back to me playing at 12 years old, I didn't even know there was an England women's team. And now there are, I think, around 55 fully paid professional cricketers in the UK, females. So there's such a great career path for any girls that are wanting to play for England um, or wanting to play professionally now, which is just something that never existed when I was younger so I think just that in itself should give people inspiration to keep playing and training as hard as they can. And then you represented Yorkshire women you also played for Notts as well am I correct in saying? <laughs> I've played for a few counties so I've played for Notts, Yorkshire, Devon and Berkshire so I've always played cricket wherever my career or university has taken me. So because, like I said before, cricket, cricket wasn't a career until this year for me. 
um, I went to Exeter Uni, played down at Devon, and then my job in marketing took me to London, Reading area, and that's when I played for um, Berkshire. So I do get quite a lot of stick from the girls because I've moved around the clubs, but I'm back with the Northern Diamonds now, which is back to my home roots. Yeah, talk us through that period. You obviously went into academia, you took the corporate job route. Is it a bit, was it purely because um, the women's game, obviously now there's the funding, but at, you know, a few years ago, perhaps there, there wasn't? It, was that the kind of how the path went for you? Yeah, definitely. I think at the time, the way that you got into the England or England Academy team was through performing at this place called Junior Super Fours, which was the top 52 under 19s in the country. So I was always part of Super Fours, but never progressed to the next step. So when it was university choice, I chose somewhere that I could still play cricket, but put my career and academia first. So that's when I went to Exeter and felt like almost my career in cricket was over at that point because no one past 19 really got selected for England, England Academy. And then from there, it was just playing cricket for pure enjoyment. So playing county cricket which is a good standard representative but it wasn't paid at the time so it was just playing for enjoyment and then from there my marketing career took me to um, Reading and then London so I played for the counties in those areas so yeah I just always got in touch with people through cricket which is always a good start when you're a young kid to figure out who to chat to to get to the next step but yeah, my career from a business perspective had to come first because there was no other way to do it, really. Talk us through how the the Northern Diamonds, you went for, you initially got a trial while still working. I think you're working at Sky, if I'm correct in saying. Yeah. Talk us through the moment in your, in your life, how it all changed for you, that trial. How did it all come about for a start? Well, I was training down south. And then the pandemic hit, so my tenancy finished in London and it brought me back to my family home in Yorkshire. And with the new regional cricket set out, there's eight regional teams. So I was trying for a team down south, but because I was up north and my sister was getting married and all the rest of it, it felt right to stay up north for the summer. So again, spoke to some of the coaches and they said, well, you can trial through playing for Yorkshire County um, in the two trial games and I took I think four wickets in those two games and showed my potential and got picked for the Northern Diamonds and then from there on it was just taking each game game after game and letting people know that I wanted a professional contract but the performances had to come alongside it so yeah it yeah it was quite a strange summer because I didn't expect to be in Yorkshire I didn't expect to be playing here but I just took every opportunity that was in front of me rather than maybe the year plan that I had prior to COVID. How did you find that initial balance whilst you're in that trial phase balancing full-time work alongside and fulfill this dream as well? Quite challenging I think the bit that I've probably always struggled with is where to put my focus in terms of focusing energy on work and then focusing energy on cricket and being able to switch on and off between those environments. So often I drive to cricket straight after a Zoom call and meeting and have a million things going around my brain in terms of what actions I need to do, who I need to email, all those different things that come with working life and jobs. So it was just being really clear with myself that cricket was my priority and how I could try and facilitate around that. Um, and training in the morning, tra training later at night. So it was a balancing act. And that's something that I'm really enjoying at the moment is just being able to dedicate my time fully to being the best possible athlete. And then when you were awarded that full-time professional contract, one of 41 women, how did that make you feel? Talk us through that moment when you heard the news. <laughs> I mean, I was absolutely over the moon a little bit. Um, speechless really in terms of yeah I was just so pleased I think it was a dream that I didn't realize that I had or that I wanted and so yeah definitely had no no regrets in taking it I think the biggest tension was leaving the stability of a full-time job that gives you a career ladder and is very safe in that 
perspective whereas the cricket contracts are year long it's all dependent on your season's performance and then you've got to just take day by day rather than thinking too far in advance so yeah I was absolutely chuffed it was just it's I've just had to put myself in a very different headspace now becoming a professional athlete and how was it also performing and playing in the Rachel Hey How Flint trophy final as well oh it was absolutely on brilliant. tv your your yeah. your colleague your sky colleagues must have been watching as well eagerly yeah. that was that at the moment it was really good you know it was such a shame that we weren't able to have any fans in the stadium and it's not fans as in getting thousands in but even just having my mum and sisters coming to watch is even when you play local cricket your closest friends and family often pop down and watch you so um yeah it was a very surreal experience but it was absolutely brilliant and I think by we played in quite a lot of big stadiums so we played at Headingley um we'd played at um the Derby County ground and a few others so I think we'd got used to playing at the bigger grounds and we'd played at Edgebaston so when we got back there for the final I think we felt ready for the final um didn't go our way but I think we've we can take a lot from it and do you have international aspirations or is it just a case that you wanted to take game by game season by season as it comes I've definitely got international aspirations but I am just trying to take it game by game I'd love cricket to allow me to travel play overseas um season in Australia but yeah I'm just trying to take it game by game because I think that's when I get my best performances and what's the greatest difference as a professional now the extra coaches the, the the training involved can you just talk us through it for those that may not know the the inside details Definitely. So the biggest shift has been the structures that the ECB have put in place that were never there before for female cricketers. So we've got batting coaches, bowling coaches, nutritionists, physios, sports psychologists, and got access to all the different areas that a professional athlete should have access to um, to make you the best possible um, physical athlete. So it's really, really great from that perspective because you're working on how your strength can come into your bowling, how you can mentally think differently so that you perform your best when you're bowling or you're batting. And you've got these different resources to tap into to become the best possible athlete. Um, and before, if I was thinking maybe two years ago, I want to get into the England Academy or the England team, that structure wouldn't have been there. So it would have been by going down and having a net on my own and talking to these different people whereas now there's structures in place so that the first team have access to that the academy have access to that and there's teams from grassroots that feed into it as well in the county structure so it's much clearer in the women's game than it ever ever used to be and then you as a fast bowler training now is it quite technical based so you've got a fast bowling coach that works with you do they look at the technique? There's a lot said in the modern game about trying to brace your leg, that shoulder hip separation. Does that come into it a lot more now? Talk us through um, the, the coaching elements. Definitely. Any advice you can give for youngsters trying to increase their pace as a fast bowler? I think the biggest piece of advice I got for my pace bowling was from your run up up until the takeoff point, you're a athlete so you're looking at your sprint technique and making sure you're as efficient as possible in using your levers so I used to run in like this whereas actually so my arms going side to side rather than thinking forward and back and running in like an athlete and all your efficiency and energy going towards the target I think as well with bowling there's so many different areas that you can focus on like your front arm your hip alignment bracing your front leg driving your back leg through that you can overcomplicate it as well. So we try and focus on one thing per session so that it doesn't overcomplicate it and then just fine tuning that throughout the winter. Um, I found that really useful. But yeah, trying watching how the likes of Stuart Broad and your shrub soul run in at the crease and attack the crease and you can take things from their action as well. But 
yeah there's so much you can work on and that's why I think just being really focused on what you want to work on is the best advice as well and talk us again through the the pre-season work you do in the gym and how that then differs when you actually get into a season because there's so many games it almost seems like a conveyor belt so how do you fit in kind of topping up your fitness during the summer and the hard work you put in to date during this winter period as well so with the summer what we'll take into consideration is how many overs we've bowled on the weekend or throughout the week and then alongside a lot of explosive work so you're on your feet a lot with cricket anyway so you don't want to be working in the aerobic zone so going for say a seven eight k run and being on your feet for another hour and a half two hours what you want to be thinking about is how to max out your capacity and working on explosive movements so it might be a 20 minute shuttle run to get reach those high speeds and reach your anaerobic zone so I think that's really important for cricket because you are spending a lot of time on your feet so your rest days or your days in between not doing too um yeah too heavy um workloads and just making it as sharp and sh sharp and short as possible and then just to end on if a youngster came up to you and said so one nugget of advice that you could give to them, what would it be? It would be keep enjoying it. I think if you enjoy your game, you'll go a long way because you'll keep playing it and believe in your own ability. Perfect, Phoebe. Thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. And all the best for the, for the season ahead. Great, thank you. thank you very much. Cheers. So Neil Kagram, Cricket Last Stories, Phoebe Graham. Thank you.